Good morning from Batu Pahat. This is my first morning in this city. I just woke up. Now going to my first places of interest. I have only half a day to finish complete Batu Pahat. My intention is to try to squeeze as many places of interest I've researched into one morning and then pack up and go back to Johor Bahru to have my relaxing staycation there. Places like Lover's Bridge, Chonglong Kong Temple, Straits of Malacca, Sergenting Kampong, Pantai Minyak Baku Beach. Let's see if I can fulfill my wish list. The Lover's Bridge is about 12 kilometers away from Batu Pahat uh, city center or town center, you call it. So after 12 kilometers of uh, cap or grab ride, okay, so now I've reached a kampung. So this is the kampung that I've reached. I need to walk the last mile into the Lover's Bridge. All right, come join me then. One thing I realized is that there's a lot of temple in Batu Pahat. I think this is primarily a Chinese place at certain pocket of town. Oh, so there's even a homestay here. Uh, so this is Kampung Seketing. So according to the map, I should be weaving through this kampung. This kampung right behind me. There's a one lane path, one lane path over here. It's kind of very semi-touristy. Yeah. On one hand, Batu Pahat is not really a touristy place, but there seems to be a lot of people coming into this Lover's Bridge. And that's why you can see quite a lot of stores lining the path. Another temple here. See, there's a lot of temples. Oh, I wonder what's, what's this temple? It looks of a certain grandeur or size. Yeah, look at those houses. They are on stilts. Wow, I do like it. It's a very simple kampong environment. Yeah, look at that behind me. So these are the kampong houses in Stilts. I was actually wondering, okay, why there is such a very grand temple in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, look at the grandness of this place. It faces the ocean or the Malacca Straits. Yeah, look at that. It really defeats all rational thinking to have a very grand temple in the middle of nowhere, okay, in the middle of uh, nobody village. So what I read up, okay, was that this is actually Chong Long Kong. So in the 1990s, okay, it was reported that a few of the Worshipper strike for the okay lottery okay or when they touches this fish yeah this uh the dragon look like fishes it is a very prehistoric fish yeah. so once they touches it and they immediately strike lottery and that's why the temple is uh is built in honor of that. So this is Chong Te Miao. Yep, a very a very famous temple. Okay, in fact one of the most famous temple 
in Batu Pahat. Many people, especially charter bus, to come in to pray in this temple. Yep, let me soak up the the Tai Chi of this place. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish I will win lottery. Okay, let me go around this temple to soak up that 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 good luck. So currently now is uh, low tide, yeah. So you can see much of the water here. Wow, such a lovely place. And the uh, lighthouse. In fact, there are not just one but two. One is nearer to us, and the other one is right at the island. And you can see the tides are coming in now. So by the way, where we are facing now is the streets of Malacca. So right all the way behind at the horizon, I think you can see Indonesia. Wow, this is a very lovely place. Very rustic kampung. So behind me, that's the Lover's Bridge. The bridge kind of leads to nowhere. Okay, and, and that gives rise to the very surreal atmosphere. So let me get back to the main axis. Alright, this is... I hope this is where I came from. Oh, oh there's a lot of cave light temple. Let me just have a look. Oh, oh that's the tiger god. That's a mountain full of golden ingots. It's a very Chinese mythological. Ah, that's a, some kind of a bridge here. Right, that brings me to a big turtle facing the temple. And this is the Tu Ti Gong. Here's an elevated view of the bay. From the pavilion, it leads to another temple. I think there's a lot of small little temples here. It's a very small temple complex, so-called uh, size. Yeah, <laughs> sizable size. <laughs> Alright, let me just go in and have a pray. Behind me is the Mazu Temple. So typically, whenever there is a coastline, whenever you are very close to the coast, uh, so there will always be some kind of a Mazu Temple. It is the temple that fishermen usually pray okay, when they go for fishing expedition. Wow, this is a surprise. I never... No, I would expect this. Okay, I'm back into the Golden Ingot Mountain. And getting out of the temple. Oh, that's a very lovely small kampong. And I've not reached the Lover's Bridge yet. There's a lot of <laughs> diversion. After going through the Winding Kampong. Okay, <laughs> I don't know how I kind of go this, go there, go there. Okay, so I think that's very typical of a Kampong. So I have reached 
almost the end okay where it leads to i believe this is the lover's bridge uh, there's a cafeteria here there's a guest house yes this is a guest house come cafeteria as i was told yes i was right earlier on i was over there overlooking this bridge so somehow through many turns and <laughs> twists and turns i'm at this lover's bridge i'm not sure why they call it lover's bridge <laughs> maybe i think this is where lovers come here to pato or to date Well, I'm alone. <laughs> no lover, nobody to pato with. Wow. It does look very off beaten track to me. I think there isn't too much of a commercialization here. Okay, let me show you what is right in front. It's just a bridge all the way to the end. So right in front of us is the streets of Malacca. So beyond that, if you can see vaguely, that is Sumatra. Yeah, if you can see some kind of a shades of mountain right behind. Well, this jetty is almost like 100 meters long. Okay, we are reaching the end of the pier. Or the jetty. I don't know what's that for. It's definitely not for boats. Probably here for fishing. But there isn't any fishes here. <laughs> I think the water is a little bit muddy. So I'm not too sure what's the purpose of this pier. It's 10 a.m. right now. Wow, the sun is a little bit <laughs> harsh and punishing. Yeah, I think I better get back to the sheds. Look at that. The village is right smack in the midst of a mangrove swamp that is on our right hand side. That's the mangrove forest. So now I'm heading back into the couple. The temple that we have visited is on our left hand side. And the homestay is right smack at the end of this bridge. Fantastic view. I think it's one way of uh, spending one whole afternoon just doing nothing except to enjoy the peace and quietness of this place. If I'm not wrong, the sun sets right behind me. So come sunset, I think this is a very nice view into the red sunset. Yeah, too bad. Right now it's <laughs> right smack in the middle of noon. And it's so bloody hot. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So I'm almost back to where I came from and uh, heading back into the kampong. Me 
which I don't stay here for my life. So this is the kind of accommodation that I expected to stay. Wow, oh, look at this. That's a see-through glass wall. Right at the corner of the kampong, I saw this newspaper cutting. Yeah, I think the laksa, the local laksa. So that's why I stopped by and uh, yeah, have a taste of the local laksa before I leave this place. So this is where the laksa is situated. That's the main store. Auntie is now making my laksa. Oh, so that's the bro of the laksa. Auntie, you bought it for how long? Here, for a year. <laughs> oh, wow. How long? Okay, so now she's serving my laksa. So this is how it looks like. Let me do a close-up of the laksa. A laksa is a laksa. Okay. <laughs> when I come to noodle me, tasting the bro, I think that will make or break it. Let me have a taste. Wow, very rich. Ooh. Uh, that's a very rich coconutty laksa. The thing is that there's some cockles in there, yeah, which I don't take it. So that kind of spoil the taste, but overall, mm, yep, it's a very rich laksa. Oh, I just had my very delicious laksa. Oh, that's a very rich laksa. So right now I'm walking around this village or, or this kampong. Okay, as you call it, because chances are I might not be back again unless maybe I will strike my toto. <laughs> yeah, if not, chances are I'm, I'm not coming back again. So I'm trying to see as much of this place as possible. So this is the kampong. This is a very predominantly Chinese village. So you can see a lot of temples here. Cool. Oh. Oops. I'm now walking out of the kampong, trying to go to Patupahat, one of the best beach front over here. It's a two kilometer walk on this kind of road. There's still some way to go. I saw the sea from here. So I guess it's pretty near. Oh, oh my God, I'm like <laughs> sweating all over. So this is Jalan Minyak Baku, yep. which is the, the beach front of Batu Pahat. Yes. Look at what's at the end of this road. It leads right into the sea. It's not a tourist beach, so please do not have too high of an expectation. Let's quickly go to the pavilion. So that's the beach of Patapaha. Oh. Oh. I think I got scolded for filming the fish. <laughs> wow, this place sure has a long name. Pantai Minya Baku. Oh, gosh. How do you spell that? <laughs> so this is the beach front of Batu Pahat. 
Like I said earlier, don't have too high of an expectation. Let's look at this beach from another angle. So this is the other side of the beach. I think it's primarily very rocky. You won't see white sand, yellow sand, yeah, all rocks. Okay, let me climb down and show you what's like at the sea level. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's uh, hard to maneuver. Oh gosh. So this is a very barnacle infested rocks Look at all the barnacles on the rocks It's pretty nice on camera Yeah But as I see on the ground, I don't think it's, it's very nice <laughs> Yeah, it's just a very normal beach Well, that's quite a lot of rocks Doing video can be very hazardous, okay? At this juncture, if you like the video, please do like and subscribe. Thank you. So now I'm trying to get back to the road, the main road. now time for me to go back and uh, do my checkout <laughs> yeah I think it's pretty hard to get a grab car here I think this place nobody really likes to come down to this place it's very off pitten but I still managed to grab a car yeah you would take him about 10 minutes to come over here so meantime having my last look at the local beach oh yes my car has come my car has come I'm so grateful if not I'll be stuck here all right I need to give him a kiss man oh hello Hi. I'm here at this coffee shop to have some food for my lunch. Yeah, so let's see what's in there. By the way, I don't know what's the name of the restaurant. Let me just have a closer look. So this is called Da Bei Sui Guo Zi Yuan. I don't know whether that's the name of the coffee shop. But over here, there is a noodle selling duck rice and a mi tiang kui. Da Bei Sui means big cup in Chinese. And you will know why when you reach there. Their signature drink is fruit juice. You can drink many kinds of fresh, pure fruit juice mix. What amazing me is the amount of freshly cut fruits being added into it. You will never find this anywhere. Inside this restaurant, also have a Mi Tiang Kui store, or you call it peanut pancake. Mr. Chai has been making this crispy version of the traditional Teochew snack for more than 30 years and the business was founded by his father. It has got a very distinctive buttery taste in it. It was reported that you need to wait an average of one hour or more to have your Mi Chang Kui. I was lucky enough to have half a piece because someone only pre-booked half a piece and I took the remaining half without having to wait. 
As for my staple, I had duck noodle, which is also famous there. It's a must try when at Batu Pahat to have a taste of their savoury duck meat noodle. Right, I'm back at the bus station. I'm getting a bus ticket to Lakin, Johor Bahru. So I'm at KKKL. So the ticket costs $13? 13, 13 ringgit. Ah. Okay, bus number. Here? Oh, okay, thank you. 5099, yes, that's the one.